So this is my actual um, top songs of 2023. Um, uh, the other one I did is a haha -ha funny, but this one's gonna be a bit different. I mean, it's technically like a 10 if you think about it. But I'm gonna do my top five favorite of the year, top five favorite songs, and then top five worst songs. And this is all my opinion too. So. Yeah, for my fifth favorite is Daylight by David Kushner. Um, kind of reminds me of, uh, what's her face, Joji? Joji? I forgot how to pronounce it. But they make really, like, indie type music with, like, like, they don't use auto-tune, but, like, they use overlapping vocals to create that auto-tune effect which I really like, and I really like that compared to autotune because it's actually natural, so it's not like made by a machine, and it actually sounds really good, and that's kind of what he does. He kind of uses like an echo effect, which I really, really enjoy. Uh, my top five worst is Last Night by Morgan Wallen. Um, um, I don't really like country. That's kind of my only reason for it, and it's popular. But, um, there is another Morgan Wallen song on this list, but this would end up to be the one that I could tolerate, the one that I could stand. Like, if it goes on, I'm gonna be like, <sighs> but I'm not gonna skip it, because, like, it's Spotify, and I don't have premium, so I have to get, so I only get six skips per, like, a time period, so I kind of sit there. Like, I wouldn't be upset. I'd be like, okay. Or just go on to a different playlist. Anyways, number four is going to be Die For You by The Weeknd featuring, quote, featuring Ariana Grande. Now, I know, Die For You by Weeknd, by The Weeknd, came out in 2016. Die For You by The Weeknd featuring Ariana Grande came out this year, the remix. So, it's different. I really like The Weeknd's music because he does all these multiple effects. He does, he gives like an 80s vibe, sometimes he does 60s, sometimes he does 70s. It's kind of how I feel about Bruno Mars. And yeah, he cures my ADHD. My fourth, the number four worst song on my list is Fast Car by Luke Combs. Um, again, country, I don't like it. And no, I just, it's not because of Luke Combs. I like one song. It's called Six Feet Apart. It was during COVID, obviously. And I actually like that song. I actually did a project on that song in school. But I really like that song. Kind of. But Fast Car by Luke Combs, I don't like. It's too country, bro. Too country. <sighs> Number three. I have Kill Bill by SZA. Um, I know this one's a bit overrated, but like, it's good. I like it. It's okay. I mean, no, it's not just okay. I like it. I love it, actually. Um, yeah, I actually don't mind SZA. I don't like how the first time that I've heard of her was from Trolls World Tour with the soundtrack. She had that one song called Other Side with Justin Timberlake, and I actually like that song. That was the best part of Trolls, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, number three, or worse, is Thought You Should Know by Morgan Wallen. Again, country, and I actually can't stand this one. It's like emo, which I love, but then it went to country. So I don't like it because they ruined they ruined my little emo boy heart. Anyways, number two on my list is Vampire by Olivia Rodrigo. I love Olivia Rodrigo. I think she makes really good music. It kind of, she kind of reminds me of Paramore in some way with like that pop with like that pop punk thing, you know. And yeah, that's kind of my favorite. It's like and. By the way, Vampire is a diss track on piano, and I just think that itself is really unique. So, yeah. 
Number two on my worst is Cupid by 5050. Um, I can't stand this song. It's very, it's too poppy. It's in the K-pop genre. I don't like K-pop. I don't like BTS. I don't like Blackpink. I don't like, I don't like K-pop. Um, only K-pop I like is Gangnam Style and Gentleman by Psy. And that's it. I'm gonna go straight to my number one worst favorite, or my worst song, and it's Flowers by Miley Cyrus. I cannot stand that song. I used to like it. I thought it was pretty cool. And then I heard it in almost every single TikTok video. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's like her voice is so naggy like this, and I don't like it. And my number one favorite song of the year is Ever Known by Need to Breathe. Um, this song is a bit special to me because I first heard this song back in August because it was in a tribute video for Bray Wyatt. And when I was little, I used to love WWE. Like, it was my favorite thing ever. Um, he was one of my favorites of all time. I even got the pleasure of meeting him. And he was so down to earth. He talked to me like I've known him for years. I mean, I did, but not on like a personal level. He made it seem like I personally know, knew him for all my life. And he, I only had one conversation with him. I only met him once, but he was really down to earth, really amazing. And tragically, he, he died this year. This song ever known playing in his tribute video and I haven't watched WWE in forever so I went ahead and watched that specific episode live because I haven't watched it live in years and tribute video <laughs> made me cry because like it brought back everything that I knew about him it's like his his character work everything it's like him being a performer is what made me fall in love with everything that he's done. And I really started to rewatch a lot of his stuff because of all this. And that's in the song Ever Known is always like playing in my head while I'm rewatching stuff because it was in my it was in the tribute video that they made. I've been listening to the song almost once a day now because I feel like I relate to the song a lot and it really means a lot to me. And then I had the passing of a classmate of mine a few months ago, I think in October, no I think it was in November, and we used to be real good friends and then we kind of grew apart and I didn't know that he had the feelings that he did and he went ahead and did something dumb um It's been hard for me to kind of cope with that because like I've been trying to hide my emotions with it but I feel like I should be putting my emotions out about the whole thing because like because like I grew apart from him so I felt like I didn't have a say in it or I have like a reason to say anything about it but like I really did care for him and and like I listen to the song and I always think of what's good in life you know so I really do recommend this song because it really helps me out or helped me out a lot and I got nothing else to say about it. Um, yeah, that's one of my favorite songs of all time just because of everything personal that's happened recently 
gets drawn back to that song. I also did a few stupid things this year that could have ended me. Um, could have ruined me. Could have done lots of things. But I listened to this song and it really... It really helps me out. It really helped me out, and I've gone three months sober off of, I've almost gone three months on SH because of this, I know that sounds cheesy, I know, but like this song really helps me out, and I know I had Cyrus peek over at it. And I told him it was three months, but I lied and said it was nicotine. And this song really helped me out through a lot of long depressive episodes that I've had. And yeah, I think I'm going to continue to listen to this song every day because it really helps me. It really helps me clear my head and stuff. And I know I'm being personal and being emotional, but... I'm just going to end the video here. Um, those were my top five favorite, top five worst songs of the year. And yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you guys have a good 2024. Um, and Happy New Year.